We now know how to implement all four types of control sources using a MOS transistor. The MOS transistor by itself is a voltage control current source whose proportionality constant is GM, the transconductance. And all these control sources behave ideally if this GM, which is used to realize the control sources, tends to infinity. Okay. Now we will see how we can realize uh, such control sources when the basic device that we have is a voltage control voltage source. Okay. A MOS transistor, as we know, it is a voltage control current source. The current is Gm times Vgs, where Vgs is the gate source voltage. Now, imagine that instead of uh, this voltage control current source, we had a voltage control voltage source to begin with. Okay. And let me say that the model looks something like this. There is a voltage V D between these two terminals. I will call them plus and minus and one side of the control source is connected to ground, the other side is the output. Okay. This is a voltage control uh, voltage source with some restrictions. This one side is connected to ground and so on. So, now instead of using the MOS transistor, we can try to use this basic device and implement our control sources using negative feedback. Okay. So, that is we will implement a voltage control voltage source and a current control voltage source using negative feedback and this particular device. Okay. Now, this is already a voltage control voltage source. You may be asking why I need to implement voltage control voltage source using negative feedback around this one. It is exactly the same as why we implemented a voltage controlled current source using the MOS transistor when it is by itself a voltage control current source. The point was the following GM of the transistor, which is the parameter of an active semiconductor device, it varies substantially with temperature, it varies from MOS transistor to MOS transistor, whereas the voltage control current source we realized using this had a transconductance which was defined by a resistance, okay, which can be much more accurately set. Similarly, here this A naught when it is uh, realized using a semiconductor device can vary widely. We want to have a voltage control voltage source whose gain is determined by not a semiconductor device, but something like a resistor. Okay. So, we will try to do this. Now, of course, I need do not need to make this any more mysterious than it is. You know what this is the model of? It is the model of what is a very popular device, the operational amplifier or the op amp. Okay. This is the output, this is the plus terminal and this is the minus terminal. So, essentially what I am saying is, we will try to realize the voltage control voltage source and current control voltage source using an op amp in negative feedback. Okay. So, first let us consider the voltage control voltage source. The output voltage V naught should be equal to k times the input voltage, where k is some gain. In other words, now for us to realize this using negative feedback, we have to define some error and based on that error, we have to drive the output up or down. Now, what does our op amp do? This voltage is V d and the output is some A naught times V d. So, if this voltage is uh, small or if it becomes negative, it drives the output also negative and if this input voltage is large, it drives the output to large positive values. Okay. So, what we have to do is, we have to define some error between desired and uh, actual quantities and feed it to the input of the op amp in the correct sense such that the output is driven to the desired value. Okay. So, what is the error? The desired quantity is k times v i 
and the actual quantity is V naught. So, we can define the error presumably as K V i minus V naught. Okay. So, that is the op amps input voltage, the op amp reacts to the input voltage, right. So, its input voltage should be related to this error, but this clearly has a problem. Okay. Where do we get K V i from? That is in fact, what we are trying to find. Okay. If uh, we already had K V i, we would not be building this amplifier in the first place, but exactly the same information can be had by dividing this entire uh, quantity by k. So, I will redefine the error as V i minus V naught by k. Now, you can clearly see that if the output voltage is smaller than required, then this error will be positive okay? and if the output voltage is much more than required, then this error will be negative. Okay? Now, this is okay. We do not need K V i, we just need V i, which is the input voltage, which of course, is available. Okay. Now, what should happen is that, if V i minus V naught by K is positive, output must be increased and if V i minus V naught by k is negative, the output must be decreased. And what does the op amp do? If V d is positive, the output is large and positive, and the more positive V d becomes, the higher the output voltage will be, it will increase the output voltage that is positive values of V d will tend to increase the output voltage and negative values of V d will reduce the output voltage to large negative values. So, it is clear that this V i minus V naught by k should be the difference voltage of the op amp, the input voltage of the op amp. Okay. In order to be able to implement this, we need V naught by k, where of course, k is more than 1, because this is an amplifier and that is very easy to obtain. Okay. How do we obtain 1 by k times V naught. If we have V naught here, so let us say we have V naught there, we can obtain V naught by k by having a resistive divider of this ratio k minus 1 r and r. Okay. So, this gives me V naught by k and I have my input source V i the op amp has two input terminals. Okay. So, if I connect V i to one of them and V naught by k to the other, we get V i minus V naught by k. Okay. So, this does appear to be in the correct direction. If V i is more than V naught by k, then this positive value will drive up the output of the op amp. And similarly, if V i is less than V naught by k, the negative value will drive down the output of the op amp exactly as you want. Okay. So, now we need to insert the model of the op amp, which is a voltage control voltage source and see what exactly the output voltage will be. Okay. If you do that, this is V d and you know that the model for the op amp is A naught times V d. Okay. So, V naught is A naught times V d or V d is V naught by A naught. So, this number here is V naught by A naught. Now, all I need to do is to write one equation. This voltage is V i, this voltage is V naught by A naught and this voltage is V naught by k. So, V i minus V naught by A naught equals V naught by k. Okay. So, it is very easy to see that V naught by V i equals 1 by 1 by A naught plus 1 by k. It can also be written as k by 1 plus k by A naught and it can also be written as A naught by 1 plus A naught by k and so on. Okay. 
if you are familiar with op-amp circuits, you would have probably seen all these forms. I will use this form and in this you have k, the desired gain in the numerator and something in the denominator and you can see that the denominator approaches 1 if this k by a0 goes to 0 okay, or a0 goes to infinity. So, v0 by vi is approximately k if a0 by k is very large. Okay. So, this circuit here using an op amp which we model as a voltage controlled voltage source and that is how it is conventionally modeled frequently. We can divide the output voltage using a resistive divider and the input is compared to the divided voltage and the output is driven based on the comparison. Okay. So, that is V d, that is V i. And if the op amp's gain is A naught, that is if the voltage control voltage source inside the op amp has a gain A naught, then V naught by V i equals k divided by 1 plus k by A naught and this will be approximately k if A naught by k is much more than 1. Essentially, a naught the gain of the op amp has to be very very large. Okay. Now, this of course, is probably familiar to you and also I am going rather quickly through this because this is uh, treated in courses like basic electrical circuits. If you are not familiar with this, please go back to those uh, lectures and brush up yourself. The bottom line is we can realize a negative feedback amplifier, negative feedback voltage control voltage source using an op amp, which is by itself a voltage control voltage source. But the important thing here is that even if A naught changes by some amount, okay, let us take an example where k equals 10 and let us say A naught equals 1000, then V naught by V i will be 10 divided by 1 plus 10 by 1000, okay, which approximately is 10 times 0.99 or 9.9 and let us say A naught changes to 2000. What happens then? Instead of this 1000 here, you have 2000 and instead of this 0 0.99, you will get 0 0.995. So, the gain becomes 9.95. Okay. So, this is the advantage of negative feedback. You may be wondering why I realized a negative feedback controlled voltage controlled voltage source using an op amp, which is by itself a voltage controlled voltage source. This is the reason. The parameter of the voltage controlled voltage source within the op amp, the gain of the op amp can vary by quite a bit. It can vary by a factor of 2, but you can see that V naught by V i, the closed loop ratio of the voltage controlled voltage source is changing from 9.9 .9 to 9.95. It is changing very little. So, negative feedback circuits have this advantage of having low sensitivity to amplifier parameters and amplifier parameters tend to vary a, a lot because they are based on semiconductor devices. So, if you realize these things using negative feedback, you can have very well controlled parameters. That is the idea. Okay. So, this is a voltage control voltage source using an op amp.